I've come to some sobering realizations about the entertainment industry during my career. Things I've wanted to talk about for a very long time, but was too nervous to say because I was worried about sounding like a crazy person. Not only was I right the whole time about the evil that I've seen, but the entertainment industry is much worse than I realized. These star shapes often match cymatic resonance patterns, meaning these are patterns that sound waves literally take in the air in the third dimension, suggesting that there was some sort of cymatic resonance frequency resonating throughout the town in the shape of that star fort, likely from a central building. Now, whether or not the sound waves were actually filling the entire town in that frequency, I don't know, but it suggests at very least they were trying to fill the town with that sound frequency. Pleasant humming sounds can put an entire town in a good mood, and it can even promote good health. Certain frequency patterns even change your metabolism, your brain function, and can even counteract depression. These central buildings that were emitting this sound were likely what we now call churches. Churches often, too, have a cymatic resonance frequency pattern in their windows. Like, guys, they literally tell you right on the Decide what frequency it plays. I remember in the late 90s, they used to warn us not to watch too much television because it lowered your brain function and even lowered your metabolism. They were warning that this is part of the reason why so many of us were turning out obese. Tuning your brain into a reality created by a piece of art can literally alter your bodily functions. This is something that the conspiracy theory community always brings up with pop music. I did a podcast on Satanism in the music industry, but more importantly is the Josie and the Pussycats machine. That shit is real. Music that's played at 440 hertz makes you sleepy or dopey. Even pop songs that are supposed to be like fun dance songs, I notice if I listen to them too long, I start to feel like I'm going to sleep. Like even K-pop is considered some of the sleepiest music ever. How is that possible? Possible. It's because they play it at 440 hertz. It's because they intentionally make it dumb and slow and dopey to put children's brains to sleep. But music that's played closer to the 432 hertz range will actually wake your brain up. It'll be sharp and bright. It'll make you feel awake. It'll make you feel energetic. 432 hertz used to be the global standard for musical pitch until the 1800s when it suddenly changed to 440 hertz, right around the War of 1812, if you know what I mean by that, right? 440 is supposed to be for opening the third eye or being spiritually awakened, which is, it's good for meditative states, but if you're trying to function and actually like break out of the matrix and be a real human being that doesn't follow what the news says, well, 440 hertz music is going to make you one of those useless, corn syrup sucking idiots. The 440 hertz frequency essentially makes you brain dead and opens you up to subtle suggestions and makes you easier to manipulate. Pop music, ladies and gentlemen, the music of the devil. But a lot of the photos and videos that NASA and other space agencies have created over the years have been manipulated or manufactured in some way. A lot of our identity in the West is derived from our understanding of space and our ability to master it with technology. Baby boomers remember where they were the day Neil Armstrong first stepped foot on the moon. That moment changed the world forever. If it were to turn out that the moon landing was faked, even if we had proof that it was not real, it would still be almost impossible to convince most baby boomers because of how deeply ingrained it is into their perspective of reality and humanity. In one of his books, Bill Clinton said that when the moon landing happened, a simple tradesman told him that he didn't believe that it was real because them fellers on the TV can make anything look real. Bill Clinton admitted after his time in the White House that perhaps that simple tradesman 
Clinton was ahead of his time. What do you think Bill Clinton meant by that? My favorite anomalies come from video footage of the astronauts operating on the moon's surface itself. The best of which are examples of astronauts being caught on wires. There are a few shots that the camera seems to pick up a really bizarre lens flare where for some reason the light goes straight up instead of sprawling out. It's possible that that's a unique effect of that specific lens that they're using, but it's also possible that that light is revealing that those astronauts are hanging from a wire. Maybe that footage was filmed in a studio, and maybe that wire is holding up the astronaut to simulate one-sixth Earth's gravity. People have long theorized that filmmaker Stanley Kubrick helped NASA film the moon landing footage using movie magic to simulate space. A lot of these techniques he would have practiced and perfected while making 2001 a space odyssey. And years later, Stanley Kubrick used one of NASA's special low-light lenses to film one of his movies. So it's possible that Stanley Kubrick had a special relationship with NASA. NASA lost all of the telemetry data from Apollo 11, meaning they have no record of the flight. The most important rocket launch in human history, and they lost all the telemetry data? Well, that's not all. They also lost all of the original film footage from the broadcast when they accidentally re-recorded over the tapes. Oopsies. We never got to see that footage with our own eyes. Nobody did. There was no independent media coverage of the Apollo landing. Instead, NASA projected the footage of the live feed onto a screen in their own public viewing room. And the media was only allowed to record that screen with their own individual news cameras. So instead of getting crisp live footage, we got highly degraded rated second generation footage of the moon landing. So if they faked the moon landing, this is just one more way that they could have covered up all of the imperfections in their studio footage. There's also an inconsistency with the way that the astronauts move around on the moon's surface from mission to mission. On Apollo 11, the first landing, the astronauts were awkwardly waddling around the surface, very slowly moving across the terrain. But in later missions, like Apollo 4, the astronauts were very confidently jumping around, weightlessly flying across the surface. It's almost as if there are two different sets of physics for each individual mission. Like the rules for the physics are different. Why the hell did the United States military conduct countless cattle mutilations in the United States and Canada between the 1960s and 80s? There were multiple possible locations proposed for the testing of the first nuclear weapons. Islands off of the east coast of Florida, for example, were considered as the best location for the safety of the environment as well as the citizens of the United States and North America as the fallout would float into the ocean. Nevada and New Mexico were considered the worst possible locations as all of the nuclear fallout would likely spread across large regions of the continent of North America, but the trade-off would be that it is the most remote region of the United States, making it the most secure location for top secret activities. So obviously Obviously, the military chose Nevada and New Mexico as their test sites and said, good luck, the rest of you. Aliens were always the media's go-to answer with everything during the Cold War era. They would really only offer you the two options for anything supernatural or bizarre that would happen in the sky, the tin foil hat answer or the official military explanation that would come later. You see a light in the sky? Ah, that's swamp gas. Or is it aliens? You see a monster? Mothman flying around a military base? That's just a sandhill crane. Or is it aliens? A broken arrow nuclear warhead lands in the forest outside of Rendlesham? At that point, we saw people, or whatever you want to call them, uh, 
coming out. They didn't come out. There were no doors or anything on this ship. These things moved out. You better believe that was aliens. The way that these cattle mutilations were reported by the media made it seem reasonable to assume that the assailants were extraterrestrial as almost every aspect of the story required an explanation that went beyond the possibilities of available technology at the time. A normal person would have been totally swayed by this, like it was a magic trick. Ufologist Linda Moulton Howe produced a documentary, A Strange Harvest, describing the events and laying out the details of the cattle extractions as they occurred in the 1970s with a heavy focus on how it would be impossible for humans to perform these extractions today with the available technology at the time. Characters like Linda Moulton Howe and Richard Doty are used to sell stories like this, to make the magic seem more believable. Like the way that the incisions were perfectly cauterized, she showed how modern laser scalpels couldn't match the abilities described by eyewitness accounts as the type of laser used in hospitals was much too weak to remove an entire organ in just a few minutes or a few seconds. And she demonstrated how loud a helicopter would be if someone were to have seen one hovering over the desert of Nevada or New Mexico, explaining that the military doesn't possess anything fast or silent enough to explain what the ranchers were describing. As I described before, it was already proven by the late New Mexico state trooper Gabe Valdez that there were humans involved in the cattle extractions. The leading New Mexico police officer involved in the investigation discovered physical human implements that were left behind at more than just a couple of the cattle ranches that were affected by the mutilations. Implements such as gas masks and aluminum radar chaff. Those are not alien implements. Not only that, but Officer Gabe Valdez also managed to link certain cattle mutilation activities to a specific deep underground military base in the Sierra Nevada. And by no coincidence at all, I assure you, when that base was shut down later on, all of the cattle mutilation activity stopped in the area for nearly a decade. Therefore, we know it was human beings performing the extractions. So if we already know the answer to whom was behind the surgical extractions of the cattle across Canada and the United States in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, why has nobody bothered pushing to find out why the military was doing this in the first place. Being an officer of the law, Gabe Valdez was sworn to secrecy. But we are not. We are the people. Linda was also featured in that same UFO documentary that I referenced about Richard Doty, in which very few clips were used, but she seemed very closed off to the idea that the military could be perpetrating any of these UFO-related activities. As if she would refuse to even enter entertain the idea. They tried to play it off like Linda's reputation was being dragged through the mud. She's like, oh, her credibility as a reporter because she's a woman is being brought into question. Except everything she said was almost perfectly consistent with what the military was willing to reveal. In fact, her narrative is that the military is actively covering up alien activities. And I watched her channel a bit, and almost every live stream, the conclusion is just that all we should do is just sit here and love each other and love the universe and eventually the aliens will come and save us. So she's another one of those church of apathy people like Prager you. So I started thinking to myself here, because the military obviously isn't extracting these ingredients to help grow or sustain anything, as the military or even the theoretical aliens, whether or not they exist, could just buy cows themselves if they really needed cattle to feed someone or intervene in the normal slaughtering or butchering process somewhere in the meat industry itself, injecting their own agents into butcher shops or some crap. It's crazy to think they're just stealing random cows because they need to eat cows. That's, all, that's what I'm saying. So instead of extracting something good from these cows, 
Maybe they're extracting something bad from these cows. Something that they don't want us to know is in the cows that might be harming us. I'm just gonna steal a couple of examples from the Veritasium video, but there are lots of different isotopes that land and settle in lots of different parts of the body, such as Strontium-90, which has a half-life of 30 years, by the way. Strontium-90 settles in our bones and our teeth, leading to bone cancer and even leukemia, as well as other degenerative issues. Then there's radioactive iodine-131, which ends up in cow's milk and then lands in our thyroid, which is especially problematic for children. So now that we know some of the types of radioactive isotopes that can hypothetically settle in the tongue, the ear, the blood, the udders of a cow, can any of those radioactive isotopes end up floating in the air as waste after a nuclear weapons test in New Mexico or Nevada, and then land in the soil? the water and the grass in the ranches across the United States and Canada, and then be ingested by a cow, which then gets ingested by us? Yes! Just because we cannot understand how the military is doing something does not mean that the military is not the one doing it. The media and the military work together to shape our perception of events like this. That is how the Matrix operates. Just like JFK said, the entire media and the military industrial complex rule the world through secret media means for secret powers. That shit is real. The moon landing footage was faked just like today's UFO threat is fake. The Cold War era is back, folks.